So you want to start modding your car, huh? Maybe it's completely stock and you want to spend some money on it, but you want to do it right. You want to knock down all the right pins on this one. <laughs> well, today I'm going to tell you about the top seven mods for American muscle cars, but they also work perfectly on sports cars like Corvettes. Let's get into it. If you want a real wild look or just some good laughs, my last video is about the seven craziest muscle car transformations. Check that one out next. Getting right into number one, we have Wickerbill spoilers. Most of the time you'll see these on Camaros, S550 Mustangs, and maybe a Charger or Challenger. A great aggressive lip adds so many angles and curves to the back of the car. This is one I highly recommend. If you already have a spoiler on the back of your car, you might not have to do any drilling at all because the bolts might already line up. If not, you're probably going to have to do some drilling into the trunk lid, but I definitely say it's worth it. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. The second mod on the list is front and side splitters. Throwing a splitter on the front or sides of your muscle car will help it look a lot lower and wider, and when you add a pair of splitter rods, it kind of looks like it has fangs, which also adds to the meanness. These not only look really damn good, they give you all the downforce, and if they're sharp enough, you could always use them for drive-by tire slashing. Legal disclaimer, I do not encourage any acts of violence including but not limited to tire slashing, paint scraping, or ankle chopping. Anyone who commits these acts can and should be punished to the extent of their crime. Front splitters aren't usually designed for being rammed or scraped against a car or wheels, so you probably have to replace those pretty frequently. Figure two sets of tires slashed per splitter, that'd get expensive pretty quick. Maybe I got an extended warranty. Warranties are invalid if you don't use the product for its intended purpose. The third appearance mod I have for today is rear valances and diffusers. Similar to front or side splitters, rear diffusers and valances do an awesome job of making the car look lower, thicker, and more muscly. If the front splitter tire slashing idea got you pretty excited, you could honestly use an aggressive enough rear diffuser for the same thing. What do you refer, Cam? Most of the highest quality rear pieces are a full bumper replacement, and that might be a little too expensive for some people. Depending on what you have and what type of look you want, there's a good chance you can find an add-on trim piece or diffuser or something. If it's a simple enough rear bumper, you might even be able to make a diffuser for yourself, which a buddy of mine did, and it came out pretty damn good. If you've got any questions about how he did that, drop them below in the comments, and I'll try to help out best I can. Up next for appearance mods, I've got LEDs and sequentials. Adding sequentials or any aftermarket brake light really helps update an older car's look like an S197 Mustang. Usually replacing any headlights with an aftermarket LED setup can help make it look a lot newer and fresher too, and it's always nice to be able to see at night. <laughs> Getting all new lights is usually fairly expensive when you buy a whole new unit from a trusted company, but you could do small stuff to help your look like tinting the lights, replacing orange directional housings with smoked ones, or getting small trim pieces that go with the lights. Oh, I'm broke, baby. I ain't got no money. Another one of the best muscle car appearance mods is vented hoods. You don't need to go crazy and buy some demon-sized hood scoop, but these can really make a difference. For one, every time you drive, you'll be sucking up all that air, and you'll be getting at least 25 horsepower per scoop and vent. Are you sure about that? My personal favorites are something like the Cervini Stalker hood made for Mustangs with a bigger scoop in the middle and vents on the sides. Again, buying a whole new hood might be out of the question for some people, and if that's the case, you can look into getting vents or inserts, or dare I say, fake scoops. Are you delusional? Do, are, do you suffer from a mental illness? From this quick, simple math equation, you can see you only get about 8 horsepower per scoop, but you'll have to choose if the price of a whole new hood is worth it for this look. If it's not worth it to you, the fake ones are probably your next best bet for a cheap install. The hardest choices require the strongest wills. The second to last best mod for American muscle cars is carbon fiber. I actually think I have some limit about how much carbon fiber is on my car, but it'd be hard to argue against someone being fully fibered out. Real carbon fiber parts can be pretty expensive, but even carbon fiber skinning yourself seems kind of fun and interesting to learn, so that could be a good alternative. You can buy a large sheet of the fabric for about 30 bucks and resin for maybe 70-ish depending on what your project is. Once you know how to do it, you can go around and carbon fiber everything in sight if that's what you really want. Mm. Roar! Jesus Christ, Aaron, fine! <laughs> Roar! Ah! 
the final appearance mod I have for today is wheels and fitment. Personally, I don't really like when people go overboard on this. Obviously, it's the owner's choice, but my interest in a car drops off somewhere around 5 degrees of negative camber. To have fitment really help your look, you don't have to go crazy with slamming it and tucking and everything, but when you get rid of a big wheel gap, it makes 75% of muscle cars look like they're ready to pounce on whatever's in front of them. You can make your bad fitment look better by getting lowering springs, coilovers, or bags, or you could always get wheels with a bigger radius or bigger tires. Making your wheels more flush with the fenders also has a pretty big effect, so you could get wider wheel setup or just get some spacers. A quick bonus exterior mod is tire riding, which makes the wheels pop a lot more. It's also probably the cheapest mod anyone can do besides everyday weight reduction, because it can be done with oil-based Sharpie paint markers. Make sure you get the oil-based ones if you decide to do this, but you can get two markers for like five bucks and could probably give five cars two coats of riding on each tire. An honorable mention for the list is installing different trim bumpers. You can usually see this with people putting ZL1 fronts on an SS or GT350 and GT500 fronts on a normal GT Mustang. I admit it usually makes the fronts of the car look better, but I'd rather make the car look good while showing what it really is. I don't think everybody who does this is trying to be some poser so that people think they have a better car than they actually do, but I do have one problem with seeing this. I think it's kind of messed up when I see people buy a V6 and then they put thousands of dollars into getting all new bumpers, lights, hoods, and wraps when they really could have bought the V8 for the same amount of money. Not everybody buys these types of cars because they want a big V8 muscle car, but I feel like it'd be really hard to have any amount of looks beat the sound of a V8. There you have it, those are the top 7 appearance mods for muscle cars. Let me know what you think of the list and how many of these you've already got or won. I say these are for American cars, but honestly, I like how they look on most cars. I even like most of these on JDMs and Germans, but I'd say they work best on American muscle. As always, if you enjoyed this video, tap that like button below and subscribe to Liberty Drives for American car content and news. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate you guys, I'll see you next week, have a great day.